Who will win the biggest training camp battles for the Dallas Cowboys? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. I am your host Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Landon is on assignment this week. So that means we've got our good friend, Vach Lombardi, here from YouTube, the star of YouTube. We actually just talking about his YouTube channel uh, before the show. He does a fantastic job covering the Dallas Cowboys. Go check it out. It'll be listed in the description. Vach, just a couple of weeks until training camp. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man, you know, it's that time of the year where we got nothing to talk about. So there's a whole bunch of top fives going on. You know, hey, what's the battles? Who's getting kicked off the bridge and all that kind of stuff? Right now on my channel, I'm doing the, all right, I'm going to break down all the all the games last year and just and just see where the run game went wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I've yeah. been doing a lot of poo-pooing on Rico Dowling, you know, Tyler Biotis and all that. So it's been it's been fun just, just waiting on camp, man. Yeah, it's also one of the the, the the top 10 list that come out of top 10 edge rushers. We saw Michael Parsons come in at, I think, number three sure. in ESPN's list today. It's just content, right? People are just dying for content, so however you can get it. But on today's show, we're going to give you some good content. We're going to be talking about some of the biggest training camp battles for the Cowboys going into July. And, Vach, let's start with the wide receiver. It's the, the battle of the Jalens, Jalen Tolbert versus Jalen Brooks. How do you think this – matchup is going to play out and who do you expect to win well you know first what's going to help them out is that they're wide receiver three but they're pass catcher four you mm -hmm. know so like you know jake is going to have a a huge huge you know role in this thing you know cd is going to get his double digit targets um i imagine that brandon cooks would be a little bit better because they seem to have figured him out later on in the season so if you're jalen tolbert or brooks your job may come down to dirty work it may come down to toughness it may come down to okay well what was Gallup's job do that you know and i've been saying a lot in the offseason man hey Gallup was a x receiver he's gone you need an x receiver in my opinion tobert is like a move around guy you know tobert plays the slide he'll go play flanker put him in the backfield put him in motion whatever jalen brooks is an x receiver mm -hmm. you know what i mean so whichever one of those guys Blocks the best, whichever one of those guys is a better deep threat, whichever one of those guys, uh, you know, deals with that whole double slant dragon concept better, whichever one of those dudes is better from the outside at the X, they may win that job. So, um, I think, uh, I think Tobert has the advantage of just one extra year. But if we keep it in the buck, Marcus, that 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 first year was nonsense. Not Jalen right. Tober did nothing with that first year. So these are two guys that are basically coming in even right now. They're two Dak Yard guys. So it, it'll basically come down to who's tougher and who can play the X better. Now, when camp happens, we'll see. But I think that looks like Jalen Brooks right now. But, you know, never so, know. I've been having the same thoughts all offseason because I think in a vacuum, I think Jalen Tolbert's the better receiver. Like if CeeDee Lamb were to go down for four weeks with a high ankle sprain, I actually trust that Tolbert could come in, be the guy that you move in the slot, be the guy that you move all around the formation and be pretty good. Yep. But we're when we're talking about finding a player to complement CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Cooks, I think that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. Yeah, man, that's the problem. Like, you know, you want your basketball team, you want your wide receiver room to be like a basketball team. First right. five, you, you want to limit the redundancies, right? And this sounds crazy. Like, CD is way better than Tobert. But Tobert is a, a Lamb-type character. He's the move-around guy. I honestly think that if Lamb was like a pure X guy, Jalen Tobert would be your bona fide slot starting, yes. bona fide 11 personnel guy. But that ain't what the that ain't what the business is. The business is we move Lamb around, and I just think asking Tolbert to go line up there in the X, I just don't think that's that's really realistic. So, um, 
and the whole thing about Dak is Dak makes everybody looks good, right? So it really comes down to can Trey Lance work with these guys, you know, preseason game one, game two, and three and all that. Like, like that's that's gonna be the weird battle. Who can overcome Trey Lance's nonsense? And We've seen Jalen Brooks kind of, you know, catch passes that are kind of high. You know, he's a he's a he seems to be a better catch radius guy. He's a little more lengthy. Blocking is going to be super important in this conversation. Super important. I think he's the better blocker. Uh, but like you say, uh, Tober may be a better route runner. He may be a little more savvy. He may has a you know maybe have a better feel for what it's like to catch passes from four. So he may have that advantage. But none of that's going to matter if you know we need an X guy. Would it surprise you at all if? Jalen Brooks is the guy that's like playing in one wide receiver sets when you just need the guy to block basically like the Noah Brown role that we had like two or three years ago now, right? The, when we need CD and Brandon cooks to get a blow, it's Brooks coming in to field the block. But when it's your true 11 personnel set, that's when we see Jalen Tolbert because he's just a little bit more flexible and all the things he can do. Man, come on, man. CD ain't blocking nobody. Brandon. That's cooks what I'm saying. Brandon exactly. Cook can do it, but he's small. You know, yeah. Jalen Tobert, Jalen Tobert has some want to, but that's like young guy want to. That's like yeah. I'm trying to make the team and I don't want to go back one to. Jalen Brooks is built to block people. You know what I mean? So it, it's going to be fun to see it happen. All right. I, I want a prediction here. So let's assume this wide receiver battle does not go well. And it's just clear that Tolbert and Brooks aren't ready. Could you see the Cowboys going out and either signing somebody? I mean, pick your name, Michael Thomas or whoever or making a trade, or do you think Mike McCarthy is just going to roll with the guys they have regardless of how it goes in camp? 21 personnel, 12 personnel. We're going to start throwing the ball to Lipke. We're going to start throwing the ball to Ferguson. We're going to knock on some wood that damn schoolmaker can catch it. Or, because I always find it odd that out of all the young people that Stephen Jones could be name dropping, he'll name drop John Stevens just in the middle of a press mm. conference and not name his other rookies. I think he's going to be an important pass catcher in the event that wide receiver three is some nonsense. I know that Landon is listening to this podcast on vacation right now, and he just smiled when you said Hunter Lipke because he's all in on having a fullback. Uh, back on this roster. So Landon is not going to listen to this till next Wednesday. So it's- <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right. Yeah, you're 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 not rock. Uh, all right, let's talk about the offensive line. That's way too much time on skill positions. Let's talk about the positions that actually matter. Who is going to win the center job for the Cowboys? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball which means that you can get your tickets faster and easier than ever. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to the first pitch. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying tickets uh, last-minute for sports, concert, and theater events near you. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. And get this, you can save even more when you choose a section and you let Game Time choose your exact seats. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Are you watching ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that unnecessary screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, Every day. All right, we are here with Vach Lombardi from his fantastic YouTube account. Make sure you go watch all his all of his great content. Watch, let's talk about the center battle. Brock Hoffman, who is the favorite of the coaching staff. I'm not sure why, but everybody in that coaching staff absolutely loves him. Against Cooper BB, the Cowboys' third round pick. How do you envision this one going? Man, I don't want to say nothing bad about Brock Hoffman, man. He don't deserve this. He one of my podcast brothers, you know, but I just hope they love Brock Hoffman like they love Joe Looney, you know. I hope it ain't like love, love. I hope it's like fake nonsense love, man. And I'm just hoping, <clears throat> I'm hoping that politics 
don't really play a huge role in this thing, right? So if it's one of those situations where everybody's on this one year deal and we can all get fired next year and the coaches come together and say, all right, y'all, we're not going to play two rookies on the offensive line. The rookie I feel like is more suited to be a day one guy would be BB. I, I, you yeah. know, you know, I think Guyton is going to have much more of an issue uh, day one and his, and his competition is, 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 insane honestly so if anything i would imagine that you would want the veteran at left tackle but then that's chuma doga and you don't want to deal with him because he don't know the plays and all that but brock hoffman man shots out to him i'm he came in and played against arizona and those guys weren't all that great but he looks solid yeah. versus the arizona kids you know he played the last game of the season versus the washington football wizards shots out to that game that he had there. that's a cool little game but when i imagine what cooper bb can do for you I imagine this world to where most cent- most teams have to hide their 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 center because mm-hmm. their center is not a very powerful guy. He may be a great athlete. He may be, you know, like smart and all that. But your most powerful dude plays guard for you. I'm a cowboy fan where I know what a powerful center look like. His name is Travis Frederick. And when you combo him and two gangsters at guard, it looks fun. Your run game gets better. Your quarterback is comfortable. So in my mind. If you take Cooper Beebe, who's a who was a senior, like a year five senior, something like that, mm-hmm. played a thousand years, and and so he's not like this whole I, I'm I've only played a little bit of football, like your left tackle. Cooper Beebe is seasoned, and he's strong, and he whoops people. He's a gangster. You put him next to the Hall of Famer and Zach Martin, and you put him next to the I'm being a homer when I call Tyler Smith a Hall of Famer, but at least he's all pro right now. Yep. Put Cooper BB in between the two all pro gangsters and let's move people. Let's move people. I was just watching film when Quentin Williams gave us fits. Dexter Lawrence gave us fits. Javon Hargrave gave us fits. All the Eagles kids in a gap when it was beyond gave us fit because Tyler Smith whooped Jalen Smith. Those guys give us fits in a gap. Let's take the powerful guy and put him with two other powerful guys and let's be strong. Jerry Jones says, if you have a strength, make it another strength by adding the strength to it, Mark. He didn't say it like that, but that's how I said it. Let's take three strengths and be strong, man. So a couple of things. Um, I, I can see why the coaching staff likes Brock Hoffman. He's tough. He's mean. He'll play through injuries. And it seems like he's going to work really hard, right? but that doesn't mean that you should be the starting center either. I think he'll probably get the first crack at it just because he's the quote unquote ventured, mm-hmm. but I, BB might be older. I'll have to double check by the way. Uh, but I think we know where this is going, right? Like it's only a matter of time until Cooper BB is the starting center. And I just don't know if I want to waste valuable training cam reps on Brock Hoffman. If we know that BB is going to be the starting center for the majority of the season, why are we waiting until we, you know, week three, week four, for him to start. I want him to get as many reps as possible because we know how much continuity means on the offensive line. I, I, I I'm not in favor of just giving players jobs, but I kind of would be in this situation. Brock Hoffman is 25. Cooper BB is 23. That's okay. But, um, Marcus, this go fact check me right on the show. That's good. That's great. <laughs> this, this, this takes me back to the day where it was like two years ago or something like that to where Connor McGovern was just practicing a lot. Yeah. And we was like, hey, man, psh, I'm just tapping my watch. Like, hey, when are we going to put Tyler Smith in there? It feels That's exactly like better. that. You know, and Tyler Smith goes into preseason games and whoops everybody. He even whoops first team guys. We're like, hey, what are we waiting on? But then, it, oh, boy, last minute emergency happens. I don't want for there to be a last minute emergency. Because at the end of the day, Marcus, this is, what it, this is what it comes down to. I want Brock Hoffman to be stronger and more physical. I want Cooper BB to snap a football. I can teach Cooper BB how to snap a football. I can't make Brock Hoffman as strong as phys- as strong and physical as Cooper BB is, right? So the easier problem would be, hey, just t- t- teach Cooper BB how to snap and let's move on from our life. Now, if they want to live this now, and look, let me just be be fair for your audience, Marcus. If Brock Hoffman goes out there and smokes it 
and he's whooping Osa in camp and he's tearing it up and preseason comes around and he's fantastic, then fine. Cooper BB is going to be the next Zach Martin. We'll play him at right guard next year. That's just what life is going to look like. But I don't want this to be a situation where Brock Hoffman is stalemating guys or he's just barely getting movement and BB's the better guy, but we're politicking and we're just playing Hoffman just because. Yeah, I mean, you and I would be thrilled if that was the case, if Hoffman just came into camp and dominated dominated mm-hmm. everybody, because that would be awesome for the offensive line, because not only would you have a great center, you would also have depth on the offensive line for the first time in, I don't even know how long, with you know TJ Bass and now Cooper Beebe. So that would be fantastic. You mentioned the power. The other thing that Beebe has that Brock Hoffman doesn't have is the athleticism. And if you're watching with us on YouTube right now, you can see the relative athletic score. I mean, BB is a big dude and he's still tested off the charts. And I know those numbers can get a little wonky every now and then, but BB is a very good athlete. So you have somebody who has this outstanding power. He can also block on the move. You can get him out in space. I, I just don't see any way that BB isn't eventually better than Brock Hoffman. And I would rather just have them start it right away so we can get this thing rolling. So maybe by the end of the season, the Cowboys have a competent center once again. And, you know, Cowboys have been fine just taking the rookies and just tossing them in hot water. Like, we've been fine doing that, you know. As long as that rookie's name is not like, you know, Josh Ball or something, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's go. Like, besides those two guys, right? As long as they're somewhat talented, right? The Cowboys have been fine with their higher offensive line picks, just throw them in the ocean and, and they and they typically swim. I just don't want to be wasting time. For example, in camp or whatever, there's this report I was talking to um Brian Broad, shout out to him. And he was alluding to the idea that if you put BB and Guyton with the third team, they somehow get more reps with the third team. And I was like, Brian. That sounds like nonsense. Because if you look at Louisville, Louisville's getting all the first team reps. Yeah. And he, he's just fine over yeah. there. I just think this is old O line coach being stubborn. Mm-hmm. Philbin was being stubborn because he ain't like Tyler Smith for whatever reason. And it just seems like um forgot his name. Um uh, Mike Solari. Solari's Solari. being stubborn now because he has a guy and he has a plan in mind. Look, man, I like I like Brock Hoffman too. But you drafted you drafted B before a reason. Let's be clear. You drafted B before a reason, and you're trying to teach TJ Bass how to snap for a reason. This is a real thing. M- center was an emergency going into the draft. So let's not act like we've had center figured out this whole time now. Quit playing. Get the young guy in there. And let's just move on. I like. And frankly, I don't really care too much about practice reps and mini camps and OTAs because you know yeah. it's not real reps. Right, you're not going up against an actual defensive tackle. I do care when we get to training camp, but the pads come on. That's where I want to see Tyler Guyton and Cooper BB get shots with the first team, and maybe early on they are ro- rotating those guys in. But if they're not rotating him in and they're buried on the the third team, I'm going to be pretty frustrated with this offensive line because I think again everybody knows what this offensive line is going to look like come October sure. why why are we wasting time getting there now yeah I mean it's it's it, and uh, I don't want to keep using the word politics because there may be some some person in your audience that just feels like oh we're just trying to be conspiracy guys right no 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 but, but it happens all the time in the NFL sure I and if it's up to me there's no better okay like week one we're playing Cleveland Week two, we're playing Baltimore. The D Lions can't get much harder than that past this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't want to just introduce the rookie in, you know, you know, the Giants game or something or Dexter Lawrence the gangster. But I don't but you understand what I'm saying. I don't I don't yeah, I don't want to just bring in the rookie in a lesser game and go up. I want to start up. And yeah. so now when we play against Carolina, we're going, oh, all right, we got Carolina this week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, their schedule is very tough out of the gate with pass rushers. You mentioned Cleveland, Baltimore. I think they play Pittsburgh in week five. Uh, it's going to be a baptism by fire for both Tyler Guy and, and Cooper BB. All right, let's but talk about the right. Yeah, go ahead. Well, thing, but if there's one last thing that could save you against a real good D lineman, it's being strong. Veteran yeah. savvy is not going to save you versus a good D lineman. Being strong will help you, you know? Absolutely. That's why. We are all in on Cooper Beebe being this team's starting center in 2024 and beyond. Uh, Let's talk about the running back position because everybody wants to know who is going to be the lead back for the Dallas Cowboys this year. Sounds like Botch maybe is a little down on Rico Dowdle. We'll talk about that one next.
Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Every day, we will be back on Monday. Uh, Landon will be off all next week. We've got some fantastic guests lined up for you, uh, like Fauci Lombardi, who is on our show today, discussing some of the biggest training camp battles. And let's get to the running back position, because this is, for most, probably the most intriguing battle. Rico Dowdle versus Ezekiel Elliott versus Free Agent X. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? So when you asked me earlier, hey, should we go ahead and sign a wide receiver or something like that? I think we need to do that now with running back. Mm. Um, watching film, you know, Zeke is a patriot. You know, it it just makes me sleepy, man. Rico Dowdle, you know, sometimes he could just be indecisive. He could just rush a little bit, you know, slow down, be patient. I get sleep. I think, actually, I think Deuce Vaughn would be really good. But, you know, so look, this is my thing. When people talk about running back, uh, they they sound or they 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 talk with this with this tone that hey anybody can go and be a great running back. And when you talk about you know the guy in Kansas City or you talk about any of the guys that were you know the uh, Niners guys prior to McCaffrey getting there, you know you talk well Vach Eli Mitchell's a great running back. He's a six round pick. Pacheco seven round pick. What they don't tell you is that those teams either have really proven offensive lines or they got really good run schemes. The Cowboys have not proven to me that they have a run scheme, like a modern run scheme, not just the old stuff I was running in high school, right? But a modern run scheme. The Cowboys haven't proven to have that. Um, and this offensive line is in flux. We, we just had a, a long conversation about why the coaching staff trust the guy that we don't trust, right? So, you know, in a, in a situation where you don't trust the scheme and the O-line is unproven, you would rather have a running back that's a little bit better. But we got Zeke and we got Rico Dowdle and we got a little bitty deuce. And I think that's what we're going to try to roll out until there's an emergency. And that's what sucks about the Cowboys and their front office. They're, they're very reactive, a proactive front office to go. I right, Rico Dowdle's in here. <laughs> let's either draft somebody or let's go and Tyler Algier, please <laughs> yep. come play yep. for us. But we react. We want to wait till week three when we look terrible and then go sign a running back or, or, or uh, trade for somebody. So one of the things, I mean, you mentioned Isaiah Pacheco and Eli Mitchell. One of the things that those two running backs have is speed, right? Yeah. Now, they're not fantastic at moving piles, or if you need to grind out a third and one, like they can kind of be replaceable in that aspect, but they have elite speed, and they've got burst, and they've got juice. That's just something this Cowboys backfield doesn't have. Like, I feel pretty good that the Cowboys are going to be maybe better in short yardage this year, and I think they're going to be better in goal line this year because I think Rico and even – Zeke at this stage of his career is a very good short yardage running back. The problem is in today's NFL that matters, but what matters more is being able to hit home runs and explosive yeah. plays where you block a play for five yards and it goes 35. And now you flip the field, you block a play for nine and it goes 60. Who is the running back on this team? That's going to give you those explosive plays because I, I just don't see it. I, I don't see that guy in the roster right now. Oh, Marcus, long are the days where we could just meander downfield and be called a good offense. You know what I mean? Those days don't exist anymore. So I, unless you're uh, – so your only two big play guys, honestly, uh, are Deuce Vaughn and Turpin, you know? And I don't mm -hmm. think Turpin is going to be doing a bunch of full-time running back work for you. I don't even know how much he's going to be using his offense, really. But um, he's a guy, and Deuce Vaughn is your guy. So if it's not one of those two guys, I don't know who your juice dude is. Rico's cool, but he ain't juice dude. Uh, no. You know, Zeke. <laughs> I, I so he hasn't so been juice dude since 2018? I get, so, I get so sleepy. I get exhausted. I just I yawn. Know. That's such a melatonin. But, hey, man, um, I think the Cowboys are going to have to go out and find somebody. Now, what I think will be helpful, is if you look around depth charts, right, there's a lot of teams that had running backs and they drafted a running back anyway. Some of those guys have to be let go. Some of those guys will be cut or, you know, you can find the disgruntled good running back and see if you can get a get a fifth for him, like a Najee Harris type dude or something like that. I don't think it's going to happen because Cowboys may not want to pay him. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's just one of the only options you have. Besides that, I don't I don't think rolling with with Rico is a great idea. It, when we talk about playoff football, we talk about playing defense and running the football. The Cowboys do bad. They do bad in the playoffs. And they do not address defense and they do not address running the football. It, you know, I mean, we we draft, sure. But how many of those draft guys are going to be day one dudes making you better yeah. versus contenders? We could be better than the Saints or something like that. But the contending stuff, 
we don't make moves to be better contenders. So we're gonna roll with Rico till week seven. Well, we and, and of all the positions on the uh, on the team, running back is the easiest to upgrade in August, September, and October. Like you mentioned, there's gonna be guys available, whether it's maybe Khalil Herbert in Chicago because he's currently buried on the depth chart. Maybe one of the Denver running backs. Denver has fifteen thousand running backs. Maybe they Jeez. move on from. Uh, Javante Williams or something like that. So there are going to be names available. Do I trust that the front office is going to be aggressive in going out and getting one? Probably not. Although this is a position that the front office does care about. I mean, we look at how they've treated the running back position over the last 10 years. Like they clearly care about having a featured running back. So if they are going to make a move, I could see them doing it at running back. Let me just ask you a question that may make you a little nervous and the rest of your audience here. I just pulled up the depth chart for the Dolphins. Raheem Mostert, mm -hmm. Devon A. Chain. So that's two names already. They drafted Jalen Wright, Tennessee. Right? Traded a third round pick in next year's draft to go get him. So they like him a lot. We love him. Yep. And the rest of the running backs they have is Savan Ahmed and uh, Jeff Wilson uh, Jr. Let me just ask you this, if this makes you nervous. Is Jeff Wilson the best running back on this team? For the Cowboys, probably. I mean, he certainly has the most juice. No, see, that, that's that's a perfect name because that is somebody yeah. like if you could trade a seventh round pick for and cool. you pair him with Zeke and Dowdle. I, I mean, obviously, it doesn't move that position up to like an A plus. But do I feel better about it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, man. So, so you know, my whole my whole point in that thing is that somebody's trash. It ain't gonna be your treasure, but it'll. So, for example, I give you another one: Brees Hall. Braylon Allen in the fourth round, Isaiah Davis in the fifth. So left over, they got Tariq Cohen and Israel Abanaconda from uh, last yeah. year's draft, right? Yeah. Is Israel Abanaconda the best running back in your room right now? Yes, absolutely. That's the problem, Marcus. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. So what this exercise proves is that, okay, well, we have a shot to get somebody that could improve the running back room, but that person would most likely be somebody that nobody else wants. But that's okay. I mean, you don't, again, you don't need this position to be star studded in order to get good production. I mean, to be honest, I think if they go into the season with Dottle and Zeke, it's not going to be great, but they will be functional to allow you to accomplish whatever you need to accomplish on offense. Could it be better? Yeah. And I think you can get better pretty cheaply. And I think that's kind of the point that you're making. Yeah. And I got one more for you. If you just ain't sure. got anything else to do. I'm ready. How about this? And I think this was actually interesting. Fantasy football players out there love, you know, they'll like this too. Derrick Henry. They like him. He's he's there. He's money guy. Justice Hill. He's a long time Raven. They love him. Keaton Mitchell, who's a dude. He just, you know, got hurt or whatever, right? Their leftover running backs are Chris Collier and Rasheen Ali. The Cowboys had eyes on him pre-draft. Yep. Is Rasheen Ali a guy that if he was on this team, the Cowboys would go, okay, well, Rasheen Ali, we like him coming out of college too late. Is he the best running back in this room? Probably. So I think we got options, Marcus. What, what I'm saying is we have options, but they'll be the fourth or fifth running back on somebody else's team. And and look, maybe that maybe that that fits us. Maybe this passing offense is so prolific. Maybe with Cooper BB playing center, that this offensive line will finally get some some kind of push in the middle, and maybe running back gets you know gets a bit of a boost, and that we could take a guy like Rasheen Ali and he'll be fine. But uh, I just wanted to run that exercise for your yeah, audience yeah. to just know what we're dealing with. Go ahead. Can I give you one more really gross one that oh, I think oh. everybody's going to hate? Um, the Cowboys were really interested in A.J. Dillon in free agency. Now, this was before the Packers signed Josh Jacobs and before they drafted Marshawn Lloyd in the third round. Mm -hmm. Could A.J. Dillon be a guy that maybe they flip a late-round pick for or sign after he gets cut? Would he be the best running back on this team? I'd rather get about 100 lift. <laughs> Just me, just me personally. So I'd rather. Not a, I'm the, he's a big name, but not a big player at all. When he, you know, when he was, you know, when his name was buzzing or whatever in the offseason, I actually watched a little bit of film. And I just encourage everybody to watch film sometimes because sometimes watching film will save you a little time. So instead of talking about AJ Dillon for months, I watched film and I didn't talk about AJ Dillon another day after that because his film is horrid. It's not great, but I could certainly see that being a name the Cowboys are interested in. But uh, let's hope not. Ew. Uh, 
We want to thank Botch Lombardi for jumping on the podcast. Go follow him on Twitter at Botch Lombardi. You can also go check out his YouTube channel. It's absolutely fantastic. You get some fantastic guests. Your content is absolutely amazing. It'll be in the bio of our YouTube channel and on our podcast feed. Please go check him out. Subscribe. Give him all the likes over there. Uh, you. you can follow our podcast uh, on Twitter at Lotton Cowboys. You can download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. I am at Marcus underscore Mosier. Have a great weekend and we will see you right back here on Monday.